welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing something very special for you guys. And as you can tell, my hair is in this big bodacious blowout state, which can I just pause and say what? Like y'all, my hair has been growing so much. Just it's way fuller. I'm telling you, my blowouts did not used to look like this. I've been using a new moisturizing regimen. And actually, if you want to know all about that, I will put the link. It's up in one of these corners. But yeah, go check out that video, and it's uh, exactly what I've been doing, minus the, the coiling method at the end. Other than that, the deep condition is what I've been doing in my hair, y'all. So I almost didn't record this tutorial because <laughs> when I blew my hair out, I've just been shook for like an hour and a half. I've just been playing in it and just, I almost wanted to just keep it like this. But instead, I'm going to keep my promise to you guys to show you exactly how I get pretty much a perfect Bantu knot out every time. Now I'm not, you know, gassing myself or anything, but Bantu kind of, between that and a braid out, those are like my two natural hairstyles that I've pretty much mastered, mainly because I've been doing both of them since uh, 2012 when I was transitioning. And of course back then it looked a hot trash mess. I mean literally, my Bantu knot out. Oh, if you see my natural hair story journey video, you know, the Bantu knots are looking crazy, okay? But at some point, we got to this. And yeah, there's very specific ways how I get this done right every single time. And it'll help you for all of those who give up on Bantu knots who are like, I can't do that, it just never turns out right for me. I always want to ask more questions because I'm like, I'm sure there's one part of these steps that I do every time that makes it work for me that you're not doing. And they're so easy, you guys, I promise they're so easy. Step one is that I start on blown out hair. So I absolutely do not ever, 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 ever do Bantu knot outs on wet hair. It is impossible for my hair to dry and honestly, I don't know anybody's natural hair that will dry with Bantu knots, even if you have them in for several days. I used to do it on wet hair and that's actually why it used to look trash. Mainly because Bantu knots, you're literally creating a new curl pattern with your hair. It really just comes out looking like you have a wet filled wash and go. And it's just, that's not what you want this. So, first thing that you're probably doing wrong that you need to do instead if you want a perfect Bantu knot out is start on blown out hair. And sometimes, you know, my roots won't be all the way dry. They are now. Um, but I try to get it as straight as possible with uh, just blow out. I'm going to say it probably a million times. How you set your hair is literally how it's going to come out. Absolutely no products are in this hair right now. I did deep condition my hair and then rinse it out and blow it dry. But there's no product in this hair. It is stretched, it is blown out, and it is ready to go. And real, real quick, I'm gonna show you exactly everything that you're probably gonna need. I'll say it like this, everything that I use to get my perfect Bantu knot out, I'll show you exactly what I do. So you want the end of a rat tail comb, not this part, but we will be using this for our part um, in the beginning. Not for our parts all throughout, but just for the beginning part. I'm gonna hold both of these up at the same time because it's really up to you However you like to comb through your hair or brush your hair when it's in a blown out state, that's what you want to choose. I've actually not necessarily used this before, but I'm going to try to use my, um, we call this a black girl brush. <laughs> I'm going to try to use this brush to get my edges really, really clean to see if I can go ahead and try that. I usually worry about my edges after the fact, um, like when I take the hairstyle down, but I'm going to see if I'm trying to set my edges this time. So we're going to use this brush to try to do that. And you will need a bucket full of of uh, bobby pins. I really only use one per Bantu knot, but you know, I never go wrong with these big ones. This was $2.50 at probably the hair store or something like that, and it's 300 bobby pins, because y'all know bobby pins disappear. They run away, they're in the trash can, they're everywhere that they're not supposed to be. And then the products that I use for my Bantu knot outs, my braid outs, pretty much all of my styling, Eco Styler Gel, specifically the olive oil brand, is my go-to. Olive oil is really the one that gets it done. It doesn't leave a residue. It doesn't leave weird things in my hair. Now, some people have a really hard time with the Eco Styler Gel. So I will say to you, whatever kind of gel that you think works best for you will work for this hairstyle. You don't have to use Eco Styler Gel. And then this is a product that I've been using probably for the last two months, maybe. But it's called Jamaican Black Castor Oil Strengthen, Grow, and Restore Edge Treatment. It's got shea butter, peppermint, keratin, all these good things. And it's from Shea Moisture. And it was actually on clearance 
The tag is now messed up, but the product is in my uh, new natural hair regimen video that I mentioned previously. So if you want to know more details about this product, go check out that video. But yeah, we're going to use this on my edges to set overnight. And y'all, I almost forgot the main player. Oh my gosh. The Dimpin' Brush. Mine is dirty. Okay, don't judge me. Hold on one second. Yes, the Dimmin Brush. This is going to, you'll see what it's for. Just, you need a Dimmin Brush. Something with these bristles like this that won't jack your hair up. Alright, if you have all those items, you are ready to go. I'm so excited to show you guys this and have our final result and reveal in the morning. So who's ready? Let's get into it. So we're going to start off by parting our hair. And like I said previously, however you set your hair right now is how it will turn out. So make sure your part is exactly how you want it. So I'm taking a fairly large section here, and that's because I'm doing larger bantu knots. You can t definitely take a smaller section if you want. Brushing through it and putting some of that gel on the edges. And then I'll brush through that just to make sure it's all in there. And I had to get the rest of my hair out of the way. I don't know why I didn't start with that. But yeah, just making sure my edges are laid down. Grabbing some eco Stellar gel and again brushing through, taking that gel all the way to the ends. And you see here I'm twisting toward my face. So again, how you set your hair is how it's going to come out. I prefer twisting toward my face. It just lays much better when I twist toward my face. And so here I'm making a little donut and pitching it with my fingers. And then I'm twist, twist, and stacking underneath the twist that I just did. So the rhythm is pretty much twist, twist, stack. And here you want to make sure, you know, sometimes toward the end it gets a little tangled, but you want it to be straight. If it's not straight, then the bantu knot will come out crazy. How you set is how it will come out. So I'm holding on to that little end piece, I've wrapped it underneath and I'm grabbing a bobby pin and securing that bottom layer of the bantu knot. Adding the bobby pin is really one of the things that people might not be doing. They try to just sleep on a regular bantu knot and think it's going to come out right. No ma'am, you got to secure those things. So I'm moving on to the next section and grabbing again a pretty large section. I'm doing larger bantu knots. You can definitely do smaller ones. Adding some gel to my edges here. And you'll notice how many times I grab for a brush, uh, whether it's my paddle brush or the uh, dimming brush, before I twist. It's so important that that hair shaft is straight, even if you gotta start over like I just did. So the foundation really matters. You wanna make sure that it's as tight as it can be. Not too tight, but definitely make sure it's tight. And then you always start with that little donut there. I recommend holding your tight little donut in place. It'll help you to twist, twist, stack. And like you see here, holding it will let you fix that end if you need to straighten it again or tighten it again. It'll let you do that without losing your bantu knot. And then you just keep going, twist, twist, stack. As long as you feel the straightness and um, that there's no bumps or ridges in the twist while you're doing it, you can keep going and just twist, twist, stack all the way until the end. Hold on to that end piece, grab your pen, and stick it on that bottom layer so that the end piece can't go anywhere while you sleep. I'm going to show you guys a few more times just because I want to make sure that you're getting my process because this really does matter. This is why the Bantu Knots come out great. If you're lazy with this section at all, I'm telling you, and just kind of twist it however. I've seen people do it all the time where you just twist it up and think, oh, it's going to come out amazing in the morning. It absolutely won't. And sometimes you do need to go in with a little bit more Eco Styler gel on that end because by the time you get to the end, you can't really feel anything on there. But that's no problem. Just put a little bit more on. We're not using a ton of Eco Styler gel just because we don't want our hair to revert. We don't want it to be wet hair. We just want it to feel like dry hair with some Eco Styler gel on it. So slowing it down one more time so you can see, twisting it up, making sure that root is pretty tight. Then we hold our donut in place. You see our donut right there? And then twist, twist, stack, twist, twist, stack, twist, twist, and stack. All the way through there. Then we wrap that little baby piece underneath. Grab a pin and pin it right in place. And as you can probably tell, I don't care about the other parts. <laughs> I don't care at all. I just kind of grab some hair in a section and go. It doesn't matter. And actually, I prefer messy parts. I think that's something else where people go wrong with bantu knots. Messy parts means that when you take these bantu knots out, they'll kind of form together in a better way. And you won't look like super boxy and super crazy. It'll just look way more natural. So now that they're all done, I just counted them up. And we have 12 total. So sometimes I have way more than this. <laughs> I didn't know which way my fingers should go. Sometimes I have more than that, but yeah, today it's 12 because I'm with the larger uh, curl effect. And I actually hated how that edge gel did my hair, so I put some beeswax actually on my edges just so they would lay down more for when I wrap them and they'll set and be nice and pretty in the morning. 
And once the scarf is on, I usually just throw a bonnet over the rest and head to bed. So here we are the next morning, just taking that bonnet off and checking on that. All of them are still in place. That is exactly what you want. Take the scarf off and just go through and take all the bobby pins out. That will save us a whole lot of time and make this just go a little bit more smoothly. So next you take any oil that you'd like. This one's a thick one, that's why I like it. It's Argan Oil of Morocco. Get it all over your fingertips and then you're going to unscrew your bandana. knot. So whichever way um, you twisted it, you're unscrewing it the opposite way so that it falls out like a perfect little corkscrew. There you go. See how that worked? And the oil helps us to be able to um, kind of reduce the frizz. I will have frizz at the end of this, you'll see, and I actually don't mind a little bit of frizz with this, but you don't want it to be so frizzy that you can't even tell it's a bantu knot. Like, what was the point then? So the oil helps us to keep these corkscrew curls looking like corkscrew curls. <laughs> And take your time with this. I've seen people rush through this process and try to rake through it. This is not something you want to do on a time crunch. You're taking your time, you're unscrewing, you're rubbing that oil all the way down the shaft while you're doing that, and just making sure that these curls come out right. And you will have to replenish your oil like I just did. If your hair is anything like mine, it's stuck in this oil all the way up. Once you've taken all your knots down, you just want to check and make sure the curls are looking right. They are. I'm going to take some more oil. And now is the main process. We are grabbing from the root and gently separating. We're not raking through this. We're not putting our fingers through the curl. We're literally feeling where the curl wants to separate and allowing it to separate there and just kind of guiding it all the way down. If you don't do this carefully, you will end up with a afro that looks like you did not do a bandana knot at all. So again, it's in fast time, but I'm showing you, you start from the root, and you just kind of move your fingers down and feel where the curl wants to separate, and just guide it gently with your fingers. Find a little gap in there, and slide your fingers through it all the way down. And you can separate as little or as much as you want to. The more you separate, the more volume you'll get, as you see my hair is literally growing by the second. And I'm using that wide tooth comb to just cover the parts from where, you know, the bantu knots were separated, and it gives a little bit more volume as well. And I always shake out my curls. It just makes it fall way more natural. So once again, a bomb Bantu knot out. I'm loving it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe before you leave. If you try it out, let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.